Heather Lynn from Minneapolis. You are listening to Doug Paget Radio. For more Doug Paget Radio fun, visit DougPaget.com. Hey, there you go. Thank you, Heather Lynn, for being our uh, for being our voice. So cute. Uh, uh, she's cute, isn't she? She's got she a cute is. little voice, especially if you know her. She's it's even cuter to hear a little voice. Uh, I have a little I wish voice. You Why all I say could it like know that? Heather Lynn. She's just a small so little person. All right, we're calling Kyle Jones. Kyle is um, is going to is uh, is our is our new atheist friend on the on, on the program. And uh, we're going to chat about uh, atheism and about the importance of atheism. Hello. Hey, Kyle, Doug Paget, and Victoria Lynn. Hi, Kyle. Hi, how's it going? Great, great. Can you hear us all right and all? Uh, yeah, I hear you just fine. Yeah, fantastic. Hey, Kyle, thanks so much for being on the show. Oh, of course. Uh, it's, uh, it's an honor. Yeah, right on. Hey, now um, you, you may not know this, but over the last few years, I've I've always taken the Christmas season to have uh, conversations with my atheist friends, and um, okay. and so so you get to play that role this year, <laughs> um, the, uh, the 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 Christmas conversation with uh, with my atheist friends, and um, the the part of the reason that that I do that is um, I have a real deep um, sensitivity and um, appreciation for what I perceive to be the difficulty of someone having to live in a religious culture, especially in a, re- in a religious season, when they don't buy all that stuff. And like, I'm, you know, I'm not a big fan of Christmas carols and sort of the, you know, the, 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 the public re- re- religious narratives anyway, but it's, I just think it's gotta drive, you know, people who like actively don't wanna believe in God even more crazy at that time, so. I don't want to put that agenda on you, but it does seem to me that that's a um, that that's a difficult a difficult thing for people who are who are functioning in a in a non non religious belief situation. Yeah, I agree. I mean, because not only do atheists feel, uh, I mean, they, they feel that way anyway when they see in God we trust on the cur- on currency or told, you know, by the Declaration of Independence that, you know, we're endowed by our Creator yes. with certain mm-hmm. inali- inalienable rights uh, under God and the Pledge of Allegiance and these sort of... Right, you uh, have to make an oath, like in court, raise your hand before yeah. God? Like, honestly, <laughs> how, much, do, yeah. how do we get away with that in this country? I, 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 I truly don't understand how that how that's possible, but... Yeah, I don't... I, so I, I basically just agree with you is it's a constant bombardment. I mean, I believe I believe that seventy three percent of Americans identify as Christian. Mm-hmm. So that's um, you know now there's this new report coming out. One in five in America uh, mark none or are not religiously affiliated in, sure. in surveys and such. Mm-hmm. But it's still a very large amount of people in this country that consider themselves Christian or religious in some way. So yeah, it's a it's tricky. But you know, I don't. I, I've never had too much of an issue with the christmas thing myself oh really that's interesting <laughs> um okay so 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 you do um you do interfaith work as an atheist with other religious traditions yes that and i find that so interesting that's why i'm glad that, that we had a chance to connect on, on facebook and now here on the show because um many of the atheist friends that i have they're they're just um you know, in, in the way that some people will talk about religious people or Christians as being like narrow, like, like they kind of create a stereotype, you know, like you're, you're narrow minded and you're not very smart and, um, you know, they're yeah. uh, bigoted and all those kinds of things. Um, and those stereotypes exist because quite often that's people's experience with religious folks, right? I mean, they're not just making that up. But it's not true for all of them. But I'll tell you, many of the atheists that I know who are public about their atheism or articulate about their atheism or are willing to share it with someone else rather than just holding it privately, like most churchgoers do, you know, um, they have they, they have an antipathy for religious people like they don't like them. Right. Like um, they, they think there's something sort of. Um, Un, un, um, unpleasing about being in conversation with, with religious folks, sometimes because they've come from those backgrounds or maybe they didn't at all. But, uh, but you strike me as different where, like, you do work on it, 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 at the, out of the Claremont schools, if I have this right, um, in interfaith dialogue with, with atheism being one of the conversation partners. Yes. T- tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, so this new university and con- consortium got started called Claremont Lincoln University, which it's kind of an umbrella for these three schools, Claremont School of Theology, which trains ministers, particularly of the Christian faith, you know, it's a United Methodist 
state-sponsored school. Mm -hmm. And then they started this other college, Bayan College, which is the Islamic counterpart. And then it's also part of the um, Academy of Jewish Religion in Los Angeles. So there are these a Jewish, Islamic, and a Christian school under this broader banner of Claremont Lincoln. Oh boy, I, uh, so to an atheist, Claremont, that's got to be bad news. Like they're ganging up on you now. They're all the three. The three oh, yeah, Abrahamic well, so tribes so are going to get together. Got, <laughs> so many people got in an uproar over this because you yeah. know they're like, uh, oh, those those Muslims, they're coming in and infiltrating our schools. And, yeah, you know, interesting. So, um, yeah, it, it's received some slack because of that, but it's also opened up for this kind of desegregation of theological study or mm -hmm. this, you know, allowing more voices in. And mm -hmm. so I, I am, you know, one of maybe, you know, I don't, I don't know if there are any other atheists involved yet, um, but I'm sure there will be. And I'm one of this first generation of, you know, to, to work towards a degree in this at this school. And I just wanted to be there to be an atheist voice, to be a humanist voice, amidst the plethora of religious voices. And lots of people, lots of atheists in the non-believing community in, in general don't like to be involved in interfaith dialogue because, right. like you said, they think they're, you know, kind of on a different level intellectually than these dumb religious people or they're, mm -hmm. they, they think that they're, you know, somehow condoning religious belief and behavior because mm. they participate in it, which is utter nonsense, I, I think. So, the, yeah, so I just I disagree with my, my, my comrades in a lot of ways. And, and it's because, interesting um, because I think that you, you feel to me like you're part of this, like this, this larger cultural shift that, that I really like, that I see happening in, in, in religion, of Christianity with kind of emerging church people, um, we've had conversations on the show here with emerging rabbis who are the Jewish community. Um, I have a little radio crush on a woman named Annie Zonneveld, who's an emerging Muslim. And now you guys kind of strike me, or you in particular, strike me as this kind of emerging emerging culture atheist that says, look, we don't want to approach atheism in a, in a fundamentalist way, like we're the only ones that are right and we want to stay separate from all the people who don't see the world the way we do. You think there's some real benefit in this inter dialogue and and in conversation and friendship with people who think differently than you do um, on these issues. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it seems to me from the other work that I've seen you you do that you want to make you think it makes everything better when all sides are doing their their version as best they can. Sure, I mean, and that's that's the you know dialogue and friendship leads. To to a, a, a putting down of our guards, mm -hmm. of a constantly needing to defend our views where, mm -hmm. you know, and so I think that that helps. It, it definitely helps. But a lot of people don't, a lot of atheists and those in the unbelieving community, you know, agnostic, skeptic, naturalist, materialist, don't feel that way. They, they're, um, I guess you would call them purists mm -hmm. or, or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. So. I guess fundamentalists would work, but there's this subset of us in this field mm. that are atheists that want to engage, want to bring about this dialogue between unbelieving communities and religious traditions. And so, you know, there's a bunch of work being done in a, a, the humanist chaplaincy at Harvard. Uh, Chris Stedman, who just wrote a book called Faithiest, is this atheist who does this similar work. Mm -hmm. And... There's, so there's this group of humanists and younger atheists that that may have may hold the same beliefs as someone like Richard Dawkins, but yeah. does not feel the need to convey them in those that manner. Yeah. Hmm. Well, and and I, I do want. I mean, I think may, you may, you all. I don't want to speak for you, but I think you all may hold the same kind of conclusions about God. But I don't know that it's built from the same fabric as some others. I mean, that's that's the way I feel about you know more more progressive religious people versus you know, more conservative religious people is they may end up with some same conclusions on some points, but boy, it, it's not exactly, it's not just a difference between, um, how we say it. There's something different about the makeup of it. Like, like what, what, what makes it, um, exist in your, in your life seems to have some different yeah. components to it. So, so, so tell us this, what, what, what happened to poor Kyle that caused you to become an atheist? <laughs> 
I, you know, I mean, obviously, obviously, thing. something tragic. Could we could we work through that now and and, and fix that for oh, you? Oh, obvious. It, it's mm-hmm. very Freudian. So I got dropped, you know, when I was young, yep. and I something. Yeah. So I I don't. Um, it's not the fact that Kyle you know, is spelled I, with an I, and it always made you feel you like a. Weren't born like this an, way, or yeah. wait, can, can we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And there, there's this, there's this really stupid. Um, this just reminded me of this really stupid internet meme where it says, you know, it's this big kind of atheist propaganda. It's like all babies are atheists because they lack a belief in God. Oh. And I, was, I always thought it was so stupid because it's like, well, they lack a belief in everything. Yeah, right, right. They're also ignorant, <laughs> deaf, you know, deaf, dumb, and blind almost. Before yeah, they, they're also drooling yeah. babies. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah they, they're invalids. Um, they can't feed themselves. Exactly. Because that's what atheists are. They're basically like the rest of us, but they, be, you know, they just can't function at the highest level. Um, exactly. Well, well, but 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 truly, give us your give us your background. Give us your um, tell tell us your 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 pedigree. How did you um, what 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 has been your religious track or your atheist track? Like, how does someone end up uh, being a a, prof, a professing atheist in in if they came from your circumstances? Well, I like many atheists was at one point an uh, atheist was at one point religious. Oh. I was. 17 when I converted to evangelical Christianity and mm-hmm. you know that's that lasted about four or five years there that's mm-hmm. what got me on the track to, of studying theology and mm-hmm. studying religion and then during that process there was a lot of deconstruction that occurred in my head and in my heart where you know I started deconstructing the biblical text and looking at you know some of the, the uh-huh. philosophical problems of you know evil and these other things and instead of going to a kind of more liberalized version of yeah. my tradition which many people do I went to the agnostic route where I just kind of went you know I I don't know about all of this I you know God might exist God might not I'm not entirely sure and then just over time I you know came uh-huh. to arrive at the conclusion that I I just don't really think there there is a God or a spirit or a soul or anything like that but I certainly don't. Um, I certainly don't have that militant desire to mm-hmm. convert the world to atheism, if if that makes any sense. So there's I, there's a lot to it as far as my biography is concerned. But it's um, as many unbelievers, I'm basically what is referred to as an apostate. You know, oh, because so because you that, had belief that, and then you walked away from it. Yeah, exactly. Someone yeah. that someone that's fallen away or or slid away from the faith or whatever. So, yes, and so yeah, that's and and then you know at that point I was already so heavy and in, involved in theology and religion and those kind of discussions that I just thought, you know, what the hell? I'm I'm an atheist. Why can't I do this? You know, I mean, I. I still can. I just it's just from a different lens. So. Mean, meaning you can still study theology and religion and religious philosophy yeah, and so yeah, on exactly. without being and a still, personal and still adherent. Have these discussions uh-huh. with people and still mm-hmm. have these meaningful friendships with religious persons. And mm-hmm. I think that you were talking about, you know, there being different fabrics to different types of atheists and et cetera. And I think that one of the ways in which these this newer generation of atheists that want to engage with religious people are, are different, is that they know a lot of religious people and they're friends with them. Mm-hmm. Mm. And when they know a lot of people and they're friends with them, you know, it, it's one thing to read somebody's book, it's one thing to read a Huffington Post piece and yeah. be angry at it because, you know, it sounds like something Pat Robertson would say or, or Jerry Falwell would say, but... It's another thing to know somebody who's of a religious faith that you like, that that is isn't isn't uh, lacking in intelligence, isn't you know morally deficient, isn't you know someone that will sacrifice their baby or pray over their child while they while they die of a burst appendix or something. You know, I mean, they're not um, they're just people. So. So, you know, I, yeah. I, I want to ask you, we're going to take a little break here just, just for a second so we can roll over to another uh, another recording. But I, I, I do, I do want to ask you what, when we come back um, about um, 
how you respond and how you think other people perhaps could respond to the kind of generic questions that religious people ask of of atheists right like um hey how do you deal with with tragedies like you know the one we saw in in uh, in, in connecticut or um you know in every in every foxhole there are no atheists these kinds of things right where like there's um there's these assumptions that atheists are just um people who don't think deeply about all the issues of life and are just you know, uh, bought into a particular scientific worldview and that and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So, uh, so, so, so when we come back, I want to I want to ask you about that and ask you about um, to to sort of share the perspective that you have about you know how people end up think how how uh, atheists end up crafting together a narrative that can be functional because a lot of religious people, even the religiously not right people, who listen to this show. Um, can't have a have a hard time um like considering atheism to be a legitimate option because religion does such particular functions in such particular ways in their lives that they can't really imagine how how someone could 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 not be of of, of religious fabric so so if you if you'll just uh just hang tight i want to ask you that when we come back here after the break <laughs> 